What is up, guys? Chase Oliver here, bringing you another video to my channel. Today, I'm going to be reviewing NXT TakeOver Fatal 4-Way, otherwise known as TakeOver 2. Before I get started with this review, though, in the description box down below, if you want a more, much more in-depth review, a longer review of NXT TakeOver tonight, go check out my long review that I did with my boy David Rivera and Levi McIntyre, otherwise known as Fort Minor Project and Thrash Maniac 99 here on the YWC. We talked about TakeOver Fatal 4-Way in much more greater detail. So if you're down for a long listen go check out that review but right now let's get started with my short review of nxt takeover fatal four-way i felt takeover fatal four-way kicked off with the right match for the show you know the nxt tag team title match between the ascension taking on callisto and sankara you know i felt the match itself it was a little bit slow to start off you know, and then afterwards, it kind of picked up in the middle of the match, and it started to become a really, really good match. I kind of wish that I got a little bit more time, and really, I wasn't that much of a fan of the finish. I thought the finish was really, really rushed. You know, here is Connor and Victor, who have been champions for such a long time in NXT, and you'd think they would end their championship reign in such a dramatic way, but they didn't. They kind of ended it just like that. Callisto and Sin Cara became the new NXT Tag Team Champions. I have no problem with it. I'm always good with refreshing things in the WWE. Congrats to Sin Cara. The character finally won a title in the WWE since debuting in 2011 and being known as the next Rey Mysterio. You know, this character has gone through hell and back. And yes, I know it's not the original Sin Cara. It's Hunico under the mask now. But, you know, the Sin Cara character, the WWE put a lot of time and effort into. And, you know, he really had nothing to show for it. And now, you know, he's the NXT Tag Team Champion with Callisto, which I'm fine with. I thought it was the right decision. It was finally time to get the belts off of the Ascension. You wanted to move the Ascension up to the main roster anyways. So I felt they did a good decision here by having Callisto and Sin Cara win the belts here. One thing, though, not a fan of the tag team name, Lucha Dragon. What kind of tag team name is that? Lucha Dragon? Ah, that just sounds so bad. I'm sorry. Just call them Lucha Lucha. Sounds so much better than Lucha Dragon. That's just me at least. But I'm glad with the change. I'm glad with the new tag team champions. The match itself, it was a solid opener for TakeOver Fatal 4-Way. CJ Parker job to a new NXT superstar. Baron Colbin, this big motherfucker, almost 7 feet tall, has a unique, interesting look to him. This guy looks like a beast and a monster in WWE. All I'm saying is this. Keep having him have squash matches. Let him look dominant until that shit doesn't work anymore. That's all I got to say about Baron Colbin. He impressed me in his debut. He squashed CJ Parker. So I'm fine with Baron Colbin. He's cool in the Chase Oliver book. When it came down to Enzo Amore and Sylvester Laporte, the match itself, it was kind of whatever. It, it told a fine story, but not a really good story, not a great story. And it's not Enzo Mori's fault or Sylvester Laforte's fault as performers inside of the ring. It's more Sylvester Laforte's character. I just can't view this guy as a villain. Like, you guys have heard me. If you watch my channel and you've seen, you know, my previous NXT reviews, I've called the Legionnaires, you know, the freaking... Los Matadores of NXT. You don't care what happens to these bums. You don't care what happens to these losers. So, like, I didn't care that Sylvester Laporte was supposed to get his head shaved or Marquise Luis, whatever his name is. I forgot his name already. That's how much I don't care about the Legionnaires. You know, the sad thing is, too, they actually had some funny, entertaining stuff with Enzo Amore and Sylvester Laporte here when Enzo Amore is backstage and he screams, LaFort! Like, I thought that shit was great. This is good TV type of stuff that you would want to put onto the main product of the WWE. I actually had myself fun watching it, but I'm just sitting here and I'm like, man, I just don't really care if Laforte gets his comeuppance. He's just a bad villain overall. That's just me. Laforte is just a bad villain. It's nothing against him as a performer. It's just that I can't get behind the guy. I didn't care if he lost his hair or not. You know, like I said, they did have some entertaining stuff, you know, with Luis getting the bucket on his head, and he ends up being bald at the end of the day. You know, that's funny stuff. That's good stuff that you could use on the main roster or on main TV or to keep yourself yourself interested throughout the night. But to me, it, I just didn't really care. And, you know, I just felt it went on a little bit too long for my liking. You know, it went on like two to three different segments. So that's just me. But, hey, it is what it is. Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy, it looks like they're not done with the Legionnaires just yet. I don't know why they want to feud these guys with the Legionnaires, but hopefully it gets some better booking for Sylvester Lafort's character down the road, so that way maybe he will actually be a villain that I want to see get his comeuppance. Something that I was looking forward to towards NXT TakeOver tonight was the debut of Kenta. 
If you guys know I made a video a while back on my channel when the WWE first signed Kenta, I was praying and I was pleading to the WWE, WWE, please treat Kenta right. And if they're going to treat Kenta like this, I have no problem with what they're doing with him whatsoever. You know, the only thing I would have to complain about Kenta's opening promo is how he bounced around between the two languages. Look, Kenta, I understand, brother. You're still learning English. I'm glad that you did well speaking English tonight, man. You did a fine job speaking your English. But don't jump back and forth between the languages. That just confuses people, man. We don't have subtitles, dude. I like what you I like I like what you had to say when you were speaking English, but don't jump back and forth from English to Japanese, man. Speak English first and then finish off your promo with Japanese if you want to. That's fine. But don't go English to Japanese to English to some Japanese to English again. That just feels mumble jumbled and all that other stuff. So that's just me. I wish he kind of structured his promo a little bit better. But other than that, they did a good job with Kenta kind of presenting him as a big fucking deal. And not only that, you know, you had it where, you know, the Ascension come out after Kenta changes his name. Yes, Kenta got the name changed, but I'll talk about that after I talk about what happened with him in the Ascension. So the Ascension come out. They're pretty much pissed off. They push Kenta around. They have it where they want their tag team title match right away. Kenta's like, oh, you don't push me around. He took off that nice suit he's wearing and kicked the living crap out of the Ascension. Hey, look, the Ascension, they're moving up on the main roster, dude. They can take a beating from Kenta. That's fine in my books. You want to establish Kenta as a big deal. They're trying to make this guy seem like he's a future main eventer for you guys. What better way than to freaking look like a boss against one of the most dominant tag teams in NXT history? That's a good way to send the statement that Kenta is going to be treated like a legit force in NXT. And I thought Kenta was a fucking boss. When he grabbed that steel chair and he threw that shit down and he sat on it, he's like, come on, man. Come on. I said, damn. What a way to make Kenta look like a boss. But sadly, Kenta's not going to be his name in the WWE. No, the WWE is giving him the name of Hidoi and Tommy. Hideo and Tommy. And really, to be honest, I understand why Kenta would change his name to keep the copyrights of the Kenta name just in case the WWE career doesn't work for him. He can always go back to Japan and wrestle as Kenta. But really, to be honest, like seriously, you don't need to change this man's name. You've been promoting him for the past week as Kenta. The announcers were calling him Kenta, even though he changed his name to Hideo and Tommy. Like, seriously, why not just keep Kenta? Kenta is a legit name. Kenta is a fine fucking name. Hideo and Tommy? Ah, I don't know. You know, I'm already used to the name, at least the last name in Tommy. I think the last name is pretty fucking cool. But it's just like, come on, man. You guys have been promoting him as Kenta. You signed him as Kenta. You introduced him as Kenta. The, uh, the announcers are calling him Kenta. Just keep Kenta. It's not that big of a deal. But they did a good job presenting Kenta, so I can let the name change slide a little bit. I am going to be honest here. The first hour of NXT, I didn't like it that much. I did not like this first hour. I just felt the first hour, it was like, man, this is not really that good of a show. It was decent to solid stuff, but I wasn't enthralled watching it. I wasn't entertained watching it all that much. Even though I liked some of the stuff they did, like I said, LaForte's character, I couldn't really care about. The tag team match, I felt the ending, it was kind of like lackluster, not as good as I thought it would be, not as epic as I thought it would be when the Ascension finally lost the tag belts. You know, I just felt, you know, some of the stuff was kind of like, eh, you know, not that good in the first hour. But the second hour made this show into a fucking good show, and it kicked off with that awesome women's match between Bailey and Charlotte. Uh, is this as good as Natalia and Charlotte? Oh, hell no. Is this still a really good women's match? Oh, hell yes. Bailey and Charlotte told a really wonderful story in that ring where you had it where Bailey was this underdog and Charlotte was dominating and dominating and dominating throughout the match. And Bailey, she would get her shots in, but when it was almost like Bailey was about to get her moves together, Charlotte would counter her at the last second. And then you finally get it where Bailey has her flurry, and it seems like Bailey is about to win the belt. But then Charlotte, she outthinks Bailey. She gets Bailey down to the ground, hits the moonsault, and then they had a really, really good scene where you had Charlotte and Bailey, you know, staring down each other and it looked like Bailey was ready to hulk up, brother. She looked like she was about to take down Charlotte Flair, and then Charlotte hits the natural selection for the one, two, three. And they would have just had that hulk up moment a little bit longer. They had to stare down a little bit longer. Like if Bailey kicked out of the, the, the moonsault and then Charlotte had really shocked and you had it where Bailey looked like she was really about to hulk up really big time and then Charlotte's like, oh, hell no. I'm just going to hit the natural selection. That would have been money to me, but this was still a good match. 
Afterwards, you have it where Sasha Banks comes out. Sasha Banks starts making fun of Bailey. Charlotte gets into the boss's grill, throws Sasha Banks down to the ground, says, bitch, no. She earned my respect tonight. She worked hard in this ring. She freaking took me to war. I respect Bailey. And then that was pretty much it. They did a good job of Charlotte's character here tonight. They did a good job of Bailey's character here tonight. It looks like they might do a triple threat down the line. Who knows? Maybe they will do the triple threat so that way Charlotte doesn't have to eat a pinfall when she loses the belt. Who knows what they're going to do? But for my money, the women's match was good stuff and got me really, really interested into back into the NXT TakeOver because at that point, after the first hour, I was kind of like, eh, but this match got me back into it. And then we get into the main event and oh boy, what a match that was. The WWE did a good job before the Fatal 4-Way match. Every guy got their own video package. They had an awesome Fatal 4-Way interview that I enjoyed very, very well. And as for the Fatal 4-Way match itself, when I look back, and keep in mind, guys, I live on the Pacific Coast time. So I live in California, so I, I live on the Pacific Coast time. So when I look back, and I said, what, what time is it? I look back at when the NXT World Title match was going to start, and I wrote this down on a notepad so I could remember. I saw it and saw that. It was 6.22, and I said, wow, these guys are going to get a shit ton of time with this Fatal 4-Way. Maybe a little bit too much time where the match could become bad because of it. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, my God, maybe you're giving them a little bit too much time. But you know what? They used all their time that they had very, very fucking well. They really did. I felt they used their time perfectly with what they had going with it. By God. What a solid Fatal 4-Way to start off the match. You know, this, the beginning of the Fatal 4-Way, solid stuff. You know, the heels team up against the baby faces. But then later on in the middle of the match, that's when it started to pick up. You get the nice little story of Adrian Neville. He's trying to get into the match as much as he can, but Tyler Breeze and Tyson Kidd keep throwing him out of the ring. They keep beating up on Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn's getting beaten up, beaten up, beaten up, beaten up. The whole fucking match. That was good shit that they did here because it added more of an impact to me to the ending of the match. Tyler Breeze was fucking money in his 30 seconds of fur flurry that he would have in the match. I would love it when Tyler Breeze would miss a pinfall and he would start pounding on that like an insane guy and he'd be like, what do I have to do to get the three? I did this. I hit the beauty shot. I hit the super kick. What do I have to do? That was good stuff. The Tower of Doom was awesome stuff, but really, to be honest, the awesome part to me was the ending of this match. Now, I gotta give credits before I talk about the ending. Tyson Kidd, way to run this fucking match, dude. Tyson Kidd did a lot in this fucking match, and he deserves props to me, dude. He pretty much carried most of this fucking match. So, Tyson Kidd, I gotta give you fucking props in this one. You fucking did work tonight. Now, the ending to this match, it was perfect because, like I said, the whole match, Sami Zayn was pretty much getting beaten down. He would hit his offensive moves every once in a while, but he wouldn't get going. And then finally, finally, Sami Zayn's getting going, man. You know, he hits Tyson Kidd with the exploding suplex. Then afterwards, dives outside of the ring, hits Adrian Neville into the crowd with a uh, suicide dive. Then afterwards, goes through the second turnbuckle. You know you, you know what he does. The second turnbuckle through the through the turnbuckles to hit the tornado DDT onto Tyler Breeze. And then afterwards, you had it where it's like, at that point for me, I said, wow, you're going to give Sami Zayn the NXT title? Holy crap. Because if you watch Sami Zayn's NXT video package, I call it the Jeff Hardy video package. Anytime you have some weird alternative rock in your video package or the superstar says, you know, I think it's my chance to finally win. You know, that's what I call the Jeff Hardy standing on the rooftops. Everybody sing your hearts out video package because that means that motherfucker ain't going to win. You want to see him win because you want to see this guy achieve the ultimate glory and success, but you know he ain't. He's just going to come this close. But when Sami Zayn lined up that Huluva kick on Tyson Kidd, I literally said, wow. They are going to give him the win. Sami Zayn hits the Huluva kick, goes for the one, two, Adrian Neville pulls out the referee, and that's what I loved about this match. I was like, thank you, WWE, because here's the thing. I really thought going into this match, this was me, I thought going into this match, they might have to play some heelish tactics with Adrian Neville. Just watching some of the booking with NXT as of late, and just watching, you know, some of the stuff they would do with Adrian Neville, I really thought, you know, you kind of have to change his character a bit. You kind of need to kind of make him a heel down the line. I know a lot of people say, well, Chase, you can't do that. And that's where I said, yeah, you can't do that. Because trying to make Adrian Neville a heel is like trying to make Billy Kidman a heel. It doesn't really work out all that well. So I didn't think WWE would have the balls to try to make Adrian Neville look 
heelish in this match or have like a heel way and type of winning it and screw over a majority love babyface. Because let's face it, Sami Zayn is more loved than Adrian Neville. That's just the bottom line when it comes down to it. More fans love Sami Zayn than they do Adrian Neville. And if Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville ever face, sure the fans would love both superstars and they'll be kind of split down the middle. But really, to be honest, Sami Zayn would get the more cheers. And what I loved about this ending right here was that, you know, they made it in a way where you felt bad for Sami Zayn. Like, Sami Zayn was about to win the big one. But here comes his so-called friend, and he does the heelish type thing, pulling out the referee, super kicks him in the damn face, hits the red arrow, gets the win, and then he's still the NXT champion. And I really said thank you, WWE, for maybe teasing Adrian Neville becoming a heel later down the line because I really thought they were going to get Tyson Kidd this belt. I really did. I thought Tyson Kidd was walking out as the NXT champion tonight. That's what I thought they wanted to do. But instead, they surprised the hell out of me by having Adrian Nell pull a heelish tactic, which I fucking love when WWE ever throws a fucking curveball my way. I love it, especially if it's a curveball that I feel makes sense in this situation. So Sami Zayn loses once again, comes so close, so fucking close. But fails once again. Adrian Neville's still your champion. Love the decision. And Sami Zayn, let me just say this. I said this in the long review, and I'm saying it here. He has the best sad face in all professional wrestling. You feel bad for that guy. When he sits there, he's looking down. He's sad. He has the wrist tape painting there. He's just like, oh, man. So close. And it's like beautiful stuff by Sami Zayn. That's why he's going to be a star in the WWE, people. Because he can pull off that fucking sad face that makes you feel bad for him. But this was a great main event and one you should check out for sure. Overall, WWE NXT TakeOver Fatal 4-Way, like I said, for me personally, the first hour was just kind of bleh. But the second hour really, really saves the show because you get a really good women's match between Charlotte and Bayley, and then you get a great Fatal 4-Way match between those four guys and Adrian Neville, Tyler Breeze, Tyson Kidd, and Sami Zayn, and they have really good storyline developments heading towards the future. That's what I really liked about the main event matches. They did a really good job getting you excited to see what will happen next in those matches. So really, to be honest here, TakeOver Fatal 4-Way, is it as good as TakeOver 1? No, I wouldn't say so. I would say TakeOver, the original TakeOver, is still better than this one, but this is a damn good show. It's still a good show, one you should check out on the WWE Network. It's definitely worth the watch if you haven't seen it already. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for checking out the NXT TakeOver Fatal 4-Way Review. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys subscribe down below and give this video a big old thumbs up. Comment down below, below what you thought of NXT TakeOver Fatal 4-Way. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at ChaseOver68. Check out my website, ChillingWithChase.com. I'm going to update everything on Friday for you guys. The Impact Review will be on there, as well as both of my NXT reviews. And don't forget, I got a Q&A tomorrow for you guys. So if you haven't sent in your questions, go check out the Tuesday Q&A to figure out how you can send in your questions. Anyways, guys, I'm out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.